that and Obviously the Royal India White. White. And we'd just been there for a week or five days and we were stopping at Sandown. So uh, we're going to look at that film. Well, this is where we're staying at Sandown, and uh, this view is uh, straight across the road from our hotel, the Tarvik Two Hotels. So there must be a, another one somewhere, and uh, that's facing the entrance from the street. Eve sat outside there in the sun. We did have some nice weather. And looking one way, you see the cliffs. I think the sun's shining into my camera, that's why it's gone dark. And looking the other way, we have the pier at Sandown. And the noise in the background is where the workers are doing some work outside of our hotel. So we start going on the trips the next day and we find ourselves at Newport which is a little uh, village, um, well it's a little town where all the yachts and stuff are, plenty of them about I tell you. Lovely lovely day but there's a bit of a wind just to keep the temperatures a bit chilly. And this is the area where the coach brought us into. So the coaches are parked up somewhere along here. And the first thing we came across was a little bit of a market stall area. There's Ken and Brenda and Eve having a look at all these things. I think he's bought something, I don't know what though. And then we moved across the road and uh, it's a bit hilly there. These guys were painting one of the outsides of this building and it's a, a slow walk up the hill. It's quite hilly in the Isle of Wight in most of the places. Now that church, there's a chap there talking to them people. He's trying to invite them in because they're doing cups of tea and snacks. Very nice. So we went in there. He said that the uh, the cheaper to have your cup of tea or coffee here than uh, go in the one of the restaurants because more expensive. So obviously a lot of people took advantage of that fact. Watch Bell Lane. And then we came across a larger market. Yeah. Another church. I bet most of the people wondering about there have come off some of the coaches that uh, arrived when we did. But I was busy photographing the buildings. I did actually buy something. I think I bought a, a leather belt off that uh, stall. He's, I don't know if he bought something there. I think she did. So they give you about an hour or so there and then, uh, you know, you do what you want.
Ken's just bought himself that hat from Burton's. And we're making our way back to where the uh, bus is, or the coach, and, and that's another shot outside that building there of some iron ornaments. Yes, there's plenty of uh, yachts, there must be a lot of rich people around this area. Yeah, right. <coughs> anyway, that was at Newport, and the next thing we go to is a place called Ride. Which is opposite Portsmouth. I just got there in time to see this happen. I'm standing on a railway bridge, looking at the hovercraft. It's the only commercial passenger hovercraft in the world, we were told. Still operating. It takes ten minutes to get from Ride to Portsmouth. It in fact, it, it actually lands at the uh, South Sea. And we were getting the water sprayed on us even from that distance. So I, when I was in the Army, I was stationed at Portsmouth and South Sea. Yeah, the spray of water. They say the Booking Book Spade Brigade come over to the Isle of Wight at weekends on that cheap day trip across. Ten minutes. Foot passengers only, you can't make a car on it. But as far as ride goes, uh, we didn't. We was only there for a short, very short time. So all we did was let, have a look at this, and walk, and found a place to have a little snack and a drink. That's Portsmouth over there. There's that famous uh, new tower that they built, and uh, on the right of that would be South Sea. There's the other overcraft, the spare one. And then they have uh, other things like um, that boat there, and this is a railway line. Never saw any trains. And this is a cliff top view of a spot that we stopped at. And uh, he let us get out and take some pictures, but uh, a bit foggy. There's the coach that we're travelling on. And we went to Allen Bay, where, where the needles are. And that uh, lift takes you down to the beach, uh, if you want to go, and bring you back up again. I think it was £4 something return. I don't think any, well, I know none of us went on it. And uh, I didn't actually see the needles either, because I didn't know. I thought the driver said you can't see them from here unless you go somewhere to the position. Anyway, we went in the restaurant and had a bit of a snack. I did not have what Ken's having. Is that good, Ken? <laughs> Strawberries and cream. Oh, straight in the old mush. Straight in the old mush, you said. Brenda's having some soup, uh, some as well. Because Brenda loves cakes and cream and things like that. Dipping in your coffee? <laughs> Yeah, it looks like they're enjoying that anyway. Why well, do you don't miss a drop? <laughs> well, there's the only needles I saw, apart from pins and needles. <laughs> and over there's a sweet shop, and Brenda's heading straight for it.
And we also went to Cows. And it was a it was a bit of a uh, dull, cold, windy day that day. So <laughs> after walking through the streets of Cows, we came across the British Legion Club, and um, we went in there, and we sat there a couple of low flyers, and watched the ships go by through the window. This is where. I'm filming from now, from the window inside the uh, British Legion Club, while keeping nice and warm and drinking a couple of uh, low flyers. And for those who don't know what a low flyer is, it's a grouse whiskey. Well, grouse fly low, don't they? Boats of all shapes and sizes went past that window while we were sat there. Yes, it was a, a pretty chilly afternoon when we got there. Of course, that's where we came in uh, on the Red Funnel Ferry when we came over from um, Southampton. And speaking of Red Funnel Ferries, is this one? Why? So it is. They look the same whether they're coming or going, they do, don't they? Up the same both ends. So you get in one end and get off the other, I think. Saves the boat having to turn round. How they carry all them coaches on those ferries, I just don't know. The weight is tremendous. Cut lorries, well, not lorries, but I don't think I saw a lorry on there, but there was um, loads of coaches and cars. And of course, another way of going across is on one of them um, catamarans. I don't know how long it takes, but they do go faster than the Red Funnel Ferry. It just says, uh, turn up and take off. That's what it says on the side of the boat. Turn up and take off. So some people come over on them, and some people come over on the big ferry, and some people come over on the hovercraft. But of course, if you come over on the hovercraft, you land at Ride. Well, there's a yacht, and the first time me and Eve ever came to Cowes, we were sailing a yacht across, and I was at the helm for part of the journey. Good experience. We came to Cows just for that day, and uh, we stopped long enough to have a meal and everything. And then we went back, but it takes over an hour or so going back to uh, Portsmouth on a yacht. But you see how busy it is at Cows, and it's like that going across the, the um, Solent. And you've got to watch out when you're on a yacht, you've got to watch out for all these boats coming out here from all directions. But it was an experience I'll never forget. I never thought I'd ever do. So that uh, catamaran is now heading back to Portsmouth or Southampton. We're heading back to the coach now. And this is the little marina where the famous uh, yachtswoman opened it. Dame Ellen MacArthur. And I think in that big building there, that's where they used to build the hovercraft from the early days. And I think that's where her yacht was built inside that uh, building over there. Anyway, we're now boarding the coach. We're heading back to the hotel, I think. Well, the 
following day we was out and about again. And we found ourselves at Shanklin. Uh, Shanklin's uh, on the seaside, but uh, they took us down there just to have a look on the coach, just to give us a, a run along the uh, front. And uh, there's a lift at the bottom that brings you right up to here. But uh, he brought the coach up here. It's pretty hilly at Shanklin. And uh, got all the worldly shops, and a lot of the cottages in this area are thatched. So while they're looking in the shops, I'm wandering about down the lane there, taking pictures of cottages and whatever I can find, really. Pavarotti. See, they nearly all got thatched uh, roofs. That's one of the hotels there. Lots of little shops dotted about, caf cafes and restaurants. You see that big hill or just walk down there. There's a nice little place in Shanklin. Down, down a fairly steep hill there's a Shanklin Chine and what it is it's like a Chinese garden leading down to the beach and you pay to go through there and uh, I'm told because Ken and Brenda went and uh, I did not and she, they said it's, it's sort of like steps going all the way down to the bottom you come out at the bottom and, you, and you're at the seaside on the beach area but if you actually go outside, you've got to pay to come back in again and then come all the way back up again. And because of that reason, uh, all the steps and everything, I de uh, decided not to go. I stayed with Eve because there's no way we're, we're, that Eve would want to do that. And we, we stayed in uh, the garden of this uh, nice little um, shop or a little restaurant affair at the back. That's like an old Model T Ford that wrapped up and there's my butler who comes to me on my computer and says, your mail saw. That telephone box was full of stuff full of uh, gifts, um, what they sell in the shop. One way of storing them up. And we sat outside in the sun and had a coffee or two uh, while um, Ken and Brenda were down on the chine. They came back up and uh, they're queuing up to buy coffee. And Eve surprised us all by buying us all a whiskey. Anyway, it's very pleasant in the sun, and we're making our way back to the coach now. We're now at God's Hill, and there's the church on top of the hill. It's quite a steep climb, and it's a lovely little place, it's God's Hill. And the story goes that uh, when they was building that church, they got all the materials ready to build it on the flat. And when the, the God got to the area in the morning to start building it, they found all the tools stuff had been moved to the top of the hill so they moved it all down again it took them all day to move it down and by the time we got it down it was too late to start building so they said we'll do it tomorrow and when tomorrow came what they call somebody it? had moved all the stuff back up the hill again and this went on for two or three days and in the end they said well it must be God's will that the church should be built on top of the hill so that's where they built it and that's where it is now whether the story is true or not, I don't know, but that's what we were told. God's Hill is a lovely little place for tourists. Nice, quaint cottages, um, hotels, taverns, cafes, all a lot. It's a, a model village, in fact, as well. So it's a nice place to spend an hour or two wandering around, as we did. 
And of course, all the coaches come here, so there's hundreds of people on holiday all come here. They all seem to get here at the same time. But I uh, wonder what it's like in the winter. Dead, I suppose. Dead. In, in this particular place, um, I thought it was a restaurant or what, but they've got a lovely garden at the back. And uh, they, they said on the notice they serve tapas. Now that fountain I just sh uh, filmed there, there was no water running through it at all. But within minutes later, he was uh, in working. I tried to get this uh, blackbird with his mouth full of worms. So here's the water cascading down there. And also down there, where it wasn't working when I first put the camera on it. Will be sound of trickling water. Anyway, we had a good walk round, and then we finished up um, having a coffee and. Uh, a sandwich or something and uh, before going back to the coach. Should have gone in there, look, the loaves and fishes. Trouble is you don't know which one to go in and there was a place across the road from the car park and they did a carvery for three pounds something but uh, if you spend your time going into them places all the time you don't see where you are, you ain't got time. Look at them peek peekabooing. The church is up that hill, and up in the trees, some blackbirds in the or crows is it crow's nest, I think. They're making their way up there. few garden ornaments for sale. Can you remember the old tin bath? Well, I don't think we're fitting that. And there's a view of the church from where I'm standing. Yes, yeah, very nice place. Bought herself a little something. Hello, he's what bought something. Mm. Oh, sparkly, mm. So there you go, that was uh, our short view of the Isle of Wight as we leave cows on our way back to. Uh, Southampton. So I enjoyed our visit. It was a lovely day and all when we uh, set sail. So we were at about what, 10 o'clock time in the morning as we're sailing across the Solent. There's Helen McCarthy's uh, bridge that she opened and uh, Catamaran coming in. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock in the morning when we were sailing across there and when we got home it was about half past eight in the evening. Long day. That's where the coach was parked yesterday. Well, we was walking around cows. There's 
there's not many people on deck, but most of them are down below. Drinking and eating and whatever. It always tends to be a bit blustery and chilly on the deck, but in this particular way, it was quite pleasant actually. And there's another red funnel boat heading for cows. Looks like some fortification there on the beach. And that looks like a power station in the background, on that chimney. I'm filming this with the window down in the inside the uh, boat now. There's another catamaran surges ahead. This is pretty quick, isn't it? Getting close to uh, Southampton now. It's a really big tankers and stuff here. Another one overtaking us. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed all that, and uh, hopefully, we might get there again one day. Who knows?